I always tell him, you know, I'm his foundation. And let him know that uh, I won't fail. The foundation that you are on will not fail. My dad and I are really close. With his support, I feel like nothing's impossible to do. What I love about Kipnik is my family. That's what I love about Kipnik. There's, I always have to count. There's my dad, William. There's my mom, Sharon. And there's my brother, Michael. And there's Heather, but we always call her Tia. And there's Amber, but we always call her Naya by her Yupik name. And there's Wilson. He just turned six. And there's Rhea, and she's four. What I love about Kipnik is the way we live with the subsistence lifestyle. I love the salmon. I love the seal. I love I love all the different foods I get to eat. One of the things I love about Kipnik is that you don't have to go to the grocery store all the time. This is our grocery store. We come here and we get salmon berries like this. If you squeeze them, but they have juice coming out. And this is what we, this is what we survive off of through the winter time. It's our ice cream dessert after we eat. With a pretty sweet taste. Our ancestors have been doing this for a long time. We're proud to continue to do so. My dad always tells me, when he's gone, all we'll have is each other. And so going together on boat trips like that and picking berries and harvesting different things, it, it builds us closer together. And it prepares us for the future because it, it teaches us that we have each other no matter what happens. Kipnak, it's a small community, a village. It's not really connected to the outside world, but I was always interested in what's going on all around us. I was curious about climate change and how it was affecting us. I didn't realize how bad it was. When I finally understood what climate change was, I thought, what could I do to help? I thought that would help a lot to tell my story of how we're being affected by climate change on this side of the world. If you know it's right in your heart, I told them, you know, don't be afraid to tell. It's mostly about the winter coming late. The snow would usually come around September or October, but for the past few years, it's been coming around November. In December 2008, it was the worst flood that I remember. You could see all of this water just flowing swiftly into the village that way. And at the same time, there was these huge ice sheets that were just coming in fast and heard these uh, loud thumps and bumps on the side of the house. And I figured that that was probably the ice, sheet, ice sheets that, that broke apart from the river that are hitting the house. Um, after the water went back into the river, there was just brown, sticky mud all over the ground and wherever the water touched. That mud was on top of these steps. One, two, three, and four. Floods in December are common. The river is usually frozen all the way till spring. And also the erosion that we're facing here. The warmer temperatures are causing the permafrost to melt, and the permafrost to melt affects the land through erosion. So the erosion cuts off some land that falls into the river, and we lose quite a bit each year. This spring, my dad and I, we measured how far it was. This year, we lost about eight feet, and Fuxua, we lost another five feet. Yeah, we have another 40 or so feet left until the bank there reaches the house. If it keeps moving at the same rate, then in the next few years, then we might have to move our house to another location.
it does scare me because we don't know if there'll be if there'll be an ice pack or not in the future. But if there's not, then it, it would be much harder to harvest a seal for our subsistence way of lifestyle, especially for the seal oil that we heavily depend on and as part of our everyday lives. The warmer temperatures could affect our way of life out here. And if we didn't get to come out here and do any of this with picking berries or any of that, it would be hard on our family, and not only my family, but all of the families in the community as well, because about 90% or so of our diet year-round is from the tundra or the ocean. And it would be hard economically. Yeah, we're really dependent on, on all this food that we get and we're very thankful for it. We're a small town that probably no one knows about, but I like to have our voices heard and letting other people know how much we are affected by climate change. I'm asking for help with how we're going to deal with this. I'm involved with the uh, Sitka Youth Leadership Committee. I'm also involved in Alaska Law Enforcement Cadet Corps, and I'm a certified apprentice firefighter. And I'm one of the Native East Olympic athletes. My name is Nelson Kanak and I'm 16 years old. My name in the Yupik language is Angutlak and it means strong and wise man.